Hi everyone, it's Kai from Swoop, and today I'm with uh, Pat Devery, who is a senior manager uh, for employee engagement at NBN. Now, as an Australian, we all know what the NBN is, mm -hmm. but we probably have a fair few people that will be watching this who are not Australians. Can you just explain to people what is NBN? Sure, look, NBN Co is the national broadband network. So we, we build the network that connects people to fast broadband right across the whole continent. So we have a funding envelope from the federal government, $47 billion, that's to get the job done. And then after we get the job done, we operate the network to try and provide universal access to fast broadband for all Australians. Um, so it's kind of funny, we found ourselves in a position two years ago, we had this charter to connect the continent, but we weren't really connecting with each other. We had lots of different channels, lots of different ways of communicating and collaborating, and that's where Workplace came in. All right, so you implemented Workplace a couple of years ago. Um, and that's kind of interesting because I meet a lot of companies that are thinking about implementing Workplace or have just implemented Workplace. But I look at particular NBN Co. And so you've been on it for two years. And I was keen to hear from you. I'm sure the, the differences or the problems and challenges of the things you're working on now is very different from the ones you worked on around launch and so the early stages of, of implementation of Workplace. Mm -hmm. So look, tell me, what, what, are you, what, what surprised you? What are some of the issues you have now that you didn't expect you might have two years ago? Well, the biggest surprise is that it, if you gave me the metrics that we have on the platform now two years ago and said you'll you'll achieve these you'll have this kind of claim right this kind of monthly active user base this kind of monthly uh weekly active user base i would have been kicking goals doing cartwheels jumping over rainbows what have you really excited and thinking that it was such a success and my job is done um what i didn't know then what i know now is that that level of activity drives a lot of noise through the platform, um, which people find, depending on you know what their information needs are, frivolous, um, irrelevant, and as a result, they start to switch off the platform itself, and there's a danger, because we're using that platform as our key communications device, and if people are switching off from it, they're missing important messages. So that's kind of interesting, it's a, it's a huge success, but in that, important messages from corporate comms run the risk of getting lost in the noise. That's right. So how have you been, how have you been addressing that? Well, there's, um, there's a few different ways, and we don't, we don't have the answer or a set of answers that absolutely work, but we're, we're trying a few different things. Um, one of them is to, and this goes into, uh, this goes into a series of sort of tactical approaches uh, that, we're, that we're developing and running out at, at this, at this current moment in time to try and drill down on this issue of noise so that people can firstly have confidence in the platform that they're able to find that relevant information because that's the, that's the key if they're not confident then no matter what you do tactically to address the issue um, you're going to have a problem because then you're going to have people slipping away mm. so firstly that that really involves defining what the platform is being used for because workplace can be a lot of different things um, it comes out of the box and you think people know how to use it and it's intuitive and you just sort of set it up and it runs itself but it doesn't really work that way um, it can be a broadcast communications tool it can be a video library like an internal YouTube if you like um, it can also be a team collaboration tool cross-functional collaboration tool um, and it can then start to integrate with your other systems and business processes. And it can be a jack of all trades, but at the same time run the risk of being a master of none. So defining what workplace is going to be in your organisation is probably the first step. So that's kind of interesting because I, I do think it is from a functionality perspective, like all the buttons are a bit like, you know, it's very much like Facebook. So you feel at home the moment you get in there. So from a functionality perspective, it's pretty easy to get your head around. But I guess what you're saying is from a, from a, a business use perspective, given that there are so many different ways in which it can be used, that's what requires more thought and sort of strategic thinking. That's exactly right. And it depends on how people within the, the broad enterprise use it, how the corporate communicator team uses it. But then 
within those communities, how people in teams or uh, cross-functional um, project areas use, use or don't use the tool. So for instance, um, in my small employee comms team, we use it to collaborate and message each other and we, we get work done faster mm. by using the platform. <clears throat> and that's a specialised case, which, which happens a little bit across MDM, but it doesn't happen broadly. The, the most uh, common use case is just to receive broadcast information. Um, but in amongst that, you have upwards of you know, 6,500 people potentially pinging messages around on the platform, and that's not going to be relevant for everybody. So then it, it comes to, on the back of it, the defining what the actual platform is, is, is educating people on how to actually filter that information themselves. Yeah. So how to use the navigation, how to use the groups to, to filter out that information, what individuals to follow, what groups you should be a part of. Um, and once again, when we launched, that was all seemed to be quite intuitive, but people didn't really find it that intuitive in terms of separating the information that runs through their news feed um, from being able to just dip into specific groups yeah. and find information quickly that way. Yeah, because when you, I guess when you start, uh, you might have some groups that reflect the business unit structures and so forth, but over time you would have, I assume, hundreds of mm. different groups. Mm -hmm. So what's your... What's your advice? Is there, is there any advice around whether you should be reading the news feed or do you point people to particular groups they should follow or what, what's your guidance sort of been to, to your <coughs> colleagues? Yeah, increasingly we, we have guided them to um, go into certain groups and, and look at the information in certain groups and to pay less attention to the, to the news feed. So the, the news feed becomes more of a uh, serendipitous discovery of information mm -hmm. kind of platform so you can find different stuff you can scroll through and say oh, I didn't know that I didn't know that person had moved there or whatever it might be but if you want to know what's going on in the organization you click on the uh, connected at MBN group which is our um, corporate comms channel if you want to know what's going in in your BU you click on your BU group which is a business unit or our function in your team in your team group and so forth so we have these these kind of three or four different layers that we um, give people guidance on in terms of that those should be the, the layers of information that you're connected to, here's how to get into them, these are the groups you should be joined into, and it's a really basic information architecture for the mm. system. Very recently, uh, Workplace made an announcement about changing the news mm. feed algorithm, um, and I know it's very new, and, and I haven't even myself really seen practically how that plays out in our yeah. workplace network. But have you seen like the impacts of, of that change in newsfeed? Yeah, that, that's actually really interesting because what, one of the other tactics that we were just about to, to walk, walk down the, the path on was to close groups. Um, not shut them down and, and delete them and move them away, but to change the privacy setting from open to closed. Um, which would, we think, have the um, impact of really limiting the amount of information that pushes through it, any given individual's news feed and make the information more relevant. Now, just as we were doing that, you know, unbeknownst to us, Workplace were working on the algorithm um, to tighten up the information that people get through their, through their news feeds. And I, I must admit, personally and anecdotally, from the feedback that I've had at MBN, that has started to work and has started to filter through the organisation. Certainly the, my news feed and the amount of um, extraneous kind of posts that come through there has really shrunk. Mm -hmm. um, and if that's happening to me, and I'm, I'm a member of so many groups across the platform, then it, it's certainly happening to other people as well. Um, so that, that tactic of closing down the groups will put on hold for a little while, um, probably until early next year. Uh, just to give that um, new algorithm time to bed down yeah. and see see how effective it has been. But the, the early signs are pretty good. Mm. So that might be a, maybe a piece of advice for those that are, that, that are watching that are thinking about mm. this thing about open versus closed groups, that if you're worried about um, sort of polluting the news feed with, uh, with, with frivolous content, mm. then, um, then maybe the news algorithm uh, has, has changed the need to do that. Yeah, and I think, I mean, it's... it's Obviously, um, Facebook have done it in response to their client feedback, which is, which is a great thing. 
Um, it doesn't fix for every situation. At the same time, if you're going to close down groups, then you turn off the ability for people to do that serendipitous discovery, yeah. which is one of the outstanding features of the platform. Yeah. So you, you can't really have your cake and eat it too, but we'll, we'll see how that new change goes. <laughs> one of the things um, uh, I've been very um, uh, really admiring with, with NBN has been the way that your uh, leadership team, in particular when Bill Morrow was the, the CEO of NBN, um, so he was, I, I remember he was the CEO around the time of the launch. Yes, um, he was. Yeah. So I know that's been a change of guards and so forth. Uh, what can, can you sort of comment on uh, on how like, your tactics should do so over time to sustain senior leaders' interest in, in employee engagement and, and how you can use workplace as a tool to do that? Mm. Well, I mean, you guys have had a lot to do with this for us, really, Swoop, because we push we push the analytics and we just, we grab it out of Swoop super quick. You know, at an enterprise level, and then at that at that CEO update group level, um, and it's, I guess, you know, I'm assuming immediately it's gratifying for them because they can see how many people are looking, how many people are engaged, responding, um, and they can see that this sort of spider webbing effect of how that communication has uh, infiltrated the organisation, which previously you couldn't see that. Mm. Um, so that that must be gratifying to see the you know the head of the company and that filter down through and we're doing that now with Steve and now our new CEO as well. Um, but more more so than that, it, it it provides the ability for leaders, whether it's the CEO or the executive or any leadership level below that, to have immediate and broad feedback. Mm which is also an extremely powerful feature of the, of, of the platform itself. Um, and, the, and the ability to measure, and NBN Co is, is driven by numbers and by measurements and by targets. And now, to a certain degree, at least on, on our digital comms platform, we can measure mm-hmm. and we can benchmark as a result. And um, you know, Swoop really has been the, the catalyst for us to be able to drive those measurements through our leadership community and, and keep them engaged that way. Well, that's wonderful feedback. We, um, on, on, just on a slight aside, we are preparing for our, um, for our uh, 2019 workplace benchmark report. So if there's anyone watching that are interested in participating and maybe even see how they stack up as companies like NBN Co, um, here's an opportunity for you to, um, to participate in that. No, I'm worried we're gonna slip down. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Pat, uh, any other uh, sort of key learnings from you after having been on, on Workplace for, for, for two years? So you talked about um, uh, the groups, the open, the closed uh, groups, mm-hmm. the new newsfeed. Um, we talked about the potential, what you can do around pollution and setting notifications and so forth. Mm-hmm. Are there any other sort of big things that you can you can share? Yeah, pro- so probably the, the, the last the last one and the major major kind of frontier that we're trying to push through now is this idea of integration. Um, and added functionality with with workplace. So if you can imagine a world where you use a, a workplace bot to put in your leave, draw up a facilities request, um, submit your expenses, and it's and it's all done through the one platform. Um, share and collaborate on documents. You know, talk talk to your electronic document management system, etc. Um, and really provide a visible, clear, day-to-day utility um, that sits side by side with the communication aspect of the mm-hmm. platform. Those integrations are, are critical for the people who've been using it for a little while, I think. So that's where we're at and that's where we're trying to trying to, to push through. We're at the cusp of a few a few things in that regard. Um, expenses is our is our next frontier. We're gonna try and marry our expense system with a with a bot and workplace that people can easily ping through expenses that way electronic document management acronym bots mm. facilities bots those kind of things so over the next 12 to 18 months that will be a major focus for us um, and I, I, I think that's it, it's, it's a challenge but it's really really exciting particularly once you've bedded down the system as a as a broadcast comms tool you can uh, bring in these integrations to really um, increase the utility of the platform for your people. Okay, well, 
thank you so much for taking time to talk to me today. Pleasure. Uh, and, and thank you for your continued support uh, and being on Swoop. And uh, yeah, thank you, Pat. It's been really great catching up. Thanks, Claire. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Bye.